country every year. But the problem, part of the problem within the problem is that one third of those killed every year are black and we are only 13% of the population. Black Lives Matter! 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 So we're here today to demand justice. Now there are a number of people who want to speak, but we're not going to stand here and speak the crowd away as we have in the past. We're going to march when everybody is here. We're going to march when everybody is here. But I'm going to let one person speak now, and I'm letting him speak because he invited me this morning to his event condemning the murder of George Floyd. He is the mayor that created the police brutality, the, what is it called, the police review board in Newark, New Jersey. Mayor Ross Baraka, give him a big hand. Come on, man. I just say, I'm here, first of all, let's give a round of applause to Larry Ham. He's probably the most consistent organizer, activist, revolutionary in the entire state of New Jersey. He marches every Monday, all the time, making sure that all the issues are always raised up. As a young man from college, I marched with Larry Ham for Civilian Complaint Review Board. I stood out in the rain for three or four hours for Faison and Orange. We marched in the city of Newark. We marched all over the state sometimes. When I was young, it was Philip Pinnell. It was Yusef Hawkins. It was Abner Luima. Some of y'all believe this is the first time it happened. And this isn't the first time cities burned. I know some of y'all believe you watched it on TV that finally something has happened. Let me tell you something. My father was beaten in 1967 in a rebellion in the city of Newark. Every major city in America burned at least once or twice. And 50 years later, we're still in the same situation. 50 years later, we're still in the same situation. We got a consent decree in the city of Newark because of years of inhumane treatment of African Americans in our city. We are still atoning for our sins in Newark, New Jersey. We're still atoning for the sins in 1967. We are told it for sins in 1977. We are told it for sins in 1987, and 1997, and 2007, and 2017. We are trying to march continuously to change the systemic issues that affect our people. George Faison is, I mean, George Floyd is dead, but that is not the only reason we're here. We're here because a white woman lied in Central Park. We're here because we can't jog in peace. Because we can't play with toy water guns in front of recreation centers. We're here because we can't be stopped at traffic stops. We're here because we can't sell loose cigarettes. Because we're getting strangled in our own backyard. This is not about the law, it's about injustice. It's not about policy, it's about injustice. It's about inhumanity. It's about these people who believe that we are not human beings. We have to say black lives matter because obviously it are black lives that are being killed. Because our children are not safe. I have an eight-month-year-old boy. And my wife the other day said to me, what are we going to tell him? When he gets old enough to go outside, how are we going to protect him if he gets pulled over at a traffic stop? God forbid he has a water gun. Well, if they look at him like he's too big, like he's menacing or too strong, God forbid that he's in the wrong place at the wrong time and has a knee on his neck by a police car and other officers are watching. We are stopping the good officers to be good officers.
officers. And so we need the good officers to stand up. You can't sit idly by and watch us be killed. You have to say something. You have to do something. You have to speak out. Somebody should have grabbed that boy off of that man and did a citizen's arrest right there. Those officers that were with him should have locked him up on the spot. Should have picked him up and marched his ass to the precinct. That's what should have happened. And anything short of that is not right. All those officers should go to jail. Every last one of them. If you did that, you'd be in jail now. And everybody that was there would be in jail. Because you'll be conspiring to watch murder. We need to make sure that those officers go to jail. That's why we're here. We need to make sure that they go to jail, all of them. And more importantly, here in North New Jersey, we need to make sure that when things happen in New Jersey, that we are just as outraged by the small things as we are by the large things. Come behind me. 
another one. Come on.
It doesn't matter what my name is. What matters is that you understand your place in history. I never could have imagined being in high school and reading about the civil rights movement to be in 2020 and to be a part of the neo-civil rights movement. Be very proud of what you're doing. There's strength in numbers and be very clear who your enemy is. Your enemy sits in the Oval Office. His name is Donald Trump. Bro, be active. Activate yourself. Every blood and crip in this city, activate yourself. This is a just cause. Understand who your enemy is. Be very proud of what you're doing right now. Everybody here, be very proud and be very clear of the agenda. Be very clear. Thank you all for coming out. Thank you. Peace to the gods of earth. Peace to the gods of earth. If you need first aid, if you're in distress, there's a group across the street in the parking lot there uh, that can give you help. And if you need sunscreen or any of those things, and water too, across the street. Okay, sis, go ahead. Assalamu alaikum. Good afternoon, my brothers and sisters. My name is Zara Sadiq, and I'm the president of the NAACP chapter at the University of Maryland College Park. I see so many people out here. Thank you all for coming. I wanted to make one thing or a couple things apparent. I want you all to look at your white friends, comrades, co-workers, and I want you to tell them, love my life as much as you love my culture. If they are not speaking, they are not for you. I also wanted to say, make that action happen. Don't just say it. Yes, you post on your Insta story. Yes, you tweet. What are you doing? Sign that petition. Start a march. Peacefully protest. Make it happen. Don't depend on somebody else. One last thing. Racism is not hereditary. It is learned. This education system does not tell you everything about your history. Teach your children. Teach your friends. Let them know who you are. We built this country. For free. Be proud of who you are, your dark skin. And let everybody know what you fight for. Thank you. Let me ask a question. The, I'm going to give you the questions that you need to ask and what you
you need to demand from people. What happened to the Civilian Review Board? Was that action north or is it passing? We need to demand that. How come there's no cops up here speaking? I haven't heard from a cop. I haven't heard from an officer. If we, yo, 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 if we don't get, if we don't get cops to change, if we can't walk to these fucking police trucks and say, yo, do you approve of this? If you approve of this, turn in your fucking badge. Yes. You get double. Excuse me, excuse me, because I'm angry. Excuse me, because I'm angry. If you kill, even in war, even in war, they aid the enemy. That's Geneva Convention. Even in war, they aid the enemy. When you kill, if a cop, we need to make that a law. Where's no disrespect to Raz Baraka? He's been doing this for decades before I was born. But how are we holding them accountable? What are we t who's the police chief in North? What is he doing? If he's not doing nothing to change shit, we need to fire his ass. That's it. That's all I'm saying. We need to change shit. We need to actually change shit. We need to actually change shit. If we don't, if we don't walk out this, if we don't walk out this, and cops ain't on their fucking toes and scared, this shit was useless. That's the fact. We can chant all we want. Oh, please. No, white people don't respect that shit. You gotta know this what I always say. You have to enforce your rights. Ain't nobody gonna give you your rights. No one's gonna relinquish your rights to you if you beg and plead. You have to enforce your rights. So I feel the anger that's out there. The people that say, yo, this ain't enough, because it ain't enough. Who's the police chief? Who's the police commissioner? What happened to the civilian review board? What's the law if a cop kills a man? Should be fucking double jeopardy. What? Double jeopardy. What? I'm done, man. Make it less double jeopardy. <laughs> sister here but listen Newark is the only city of 500 municipalities in New Jersey trying to establish a police review board the question was asked what's going on with the review board the city of Newark the people of Newark since 1966 were demanding a police review board it took 50 years of protesting. For 50 years, people protested to demand a police review board. There were so many police brutality cases in Newark that we went to the ACLU, when I say we, the People's Organization, went to the ACLU office right there. You can see it from here. It's like 15 Market Street. And we said, no other you need sign. To do something with all no these other cases. Sign. So they took all the cases we had, Tell wrapped no them up, sign. No sent them to the Justice Department. The Justice Department came into Newark no other sign. Yes, and investigated for two years. At the end of those two years, the investigation found four things. One, that the Newark police were violating people's constitutional rights. Two, that they were engaged in racially discriminatory behavior. Three, that they did engage in acts of police brutality. And four, some of the police were in fact involved in criminal activity. Now they said they gave remedies, and one of the remedies was civilian oversight of the police. That manifests itself in Newark as a Civilian Complaint Review Board, the CCRB. The mayor, just months after he was elected, issued an executive order establishing the Police Review Board in Newark. A year later, a year later, the City Council of Newark passed in the ordinance into law the Civilian Review Board. After that, now listen to this, after that, the Fraternal Order of Police, Lodge Number 12, went into Superior Court and sued to stop the action of the police review board. The city of Newark, under the mayor, the mayor directed his legal department to challenge their suit, and we lost at the superior court level. But he didn't stop. He ordered his department of law to challenge it in appeals court, and the city of Newark won in appeals court. Because there was a lot of talk about here.
about who our enemies are. So let me let me try to clarify who like in the right around here is the enemy. <laughs> we know who's in the White House. I'm gonna tell you who is moving against your interests here. After the city of North won an appellate court, the Fraternal Order of Police, Lodge Number 12, sued in state Supreme Court. They are spending hundreds of thousands of dollars to stop the establishment of a police review board. The police review board would be the first civilian body established to make the police accountable and they are trying to stop it and who is they the fraternal order of police say it large number 12 large number 12 yes, the brother still being talked about trump and he did right we must defeat trump but let me tell you who helped, listen, listen, who helped to make Donald Trump president? Donald Trump was endorsed by the National Fraternal Order of Police, 330,000 members. The Fraternal Order of Police endorsed Trump and the Ku Klux Klan endorsed Trump. So the police and the Klan helped make Trump the President of the United States. So listen, listen, this is what we need you to really do. If you really want accountability, we need you to call the state Supreme Court on Monday and say that you, your organization, whoever you represent or don't represent, demand that the Supreme Court uphold the appeals court decision to establish, for Newark to establish the police review board. Now listen, listen. Well, that's what the suit is about. The suit is about, they don't want, see, they wouldn't mind if it was a review board with no power, where people just came and complain and nothing was done. But this review board is gonna have subpoena power. So when the review board tells those cops to come in, they got to bring their ass in before the people. So listen, listen, if you're really serious, and this is not the only thing like, Doing this one thing ain't gonna make you a revolutionary. But, but, the requirement of the moment is this. If Newark is able to set precedent and establish a police review board with subpoena and investigatory powers, it will make it possible for every city in New Jersey to have a police review board. So brothers and sisters, we have an arsenal. We have an arsenal. And there are all kind of tools in our arsenal. One of the tools is marching. One of the tools is voting. One of the tools is economic boycott. One of the tools is going down to city council and raising hell. We got all kind of tools. And we must use all of our tools. So if there are a thousand people here today, if there are a thousand people here today, we want a thousand phone calls made to the state Supreme Court on Monday and tell them, I'm going to give you the number right now. No, that's U.S. Supreme Court. <laughs> it's the state Supreme Court of New Jersey. All you got to do is Google it. That's all you gotta do. State Supreme Court of New Jersey. But I wanna say this also.
this is going to be a long struggle. If those of you, if, if those of us that are just here right now could unite into a movement, we would be the most powerful movement in the state of New Jersey. Nothing could stop us. Let's stay together. Let's stay together. Before you leave here today, where are the members of the People's Organization for Progress? Raise your hand. Before you leave here today, leave your email, your cell phone number, your contact information. Because when this coronavirus is lifted, you think we had a big demonstration today. Wait till we call the next one. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm currently a rising third year at Rutgers Law School in Newark. I'm going to take my mask off because I can't breathe. Not because of this mask. Not because we're standing here in solidarity with George Floyd. But because every day we wake up, there's another face that looks like me that has died for no reason. And we all are wondering, why do they keep killing us? They're killing us when we're innocent because we scare them. Because we have power. There is power in numbers, everybody. So for all of you who feel like you're helpless, you're not helpless. You're not helpless. This is the first step. Stay involved. Stay involved. You are not helpless. We have the power to make a change. And most importantly, please make sure that you vote and pay attention. Thank you. Next, I'm going to call the youngest person to ever run for the Board of Education. He ran for the school board at 18 years old, Kason Little from Elizabeth. Give him a big hand. Kason. Sworn police. 
police officers. We have more police officers in the United States than any other country on the face of the earth except one, the People's Republic of China. The People's Republic of China has 1.5 million sworn law enforcement officers. But they know they have 1.5 million sworn law enforcement officers. They have 1.3 billion people. We only have 330 million people, but we have 1 million sworn officers. I am saying to you today, and if there are any press here I want to go on record, that every city, every town, every village in this state and in this country should have some type of civilian oversight board of the police. And why do I say that? Listen, why do I say that? Because the police are not only a paramilitary organization. They are a political organization and a political force. You know why it's so hard to get cops convicted in police brutality cases? Because their organizations have paid lobbyists over the years to go into Congress and get laws passed to set the standard for evidence so high that it's almost impossible to meet. The other thing is they get laws passed to give police immunity. We say the police are above the law, but that's the truth. They really are above the law. But I'm telling you this, whether you kill a person and you're in a blue uniform or no uniform, it's still murder, and you should go to jail for murder. <laughs> Brothers and sisters, America stands at a crossroad. One path leads toward democracy. The other path leads toward fascism. And that's why what young brother was saying up here about Trump is so important. He's not just a bumbling idiot and incompetent fool. Quite frankly, I think all of that is an act. I think that Donald Trump is the most dangerous president we have had in our lifetime. Trump, Trump has made common cause with the white supremacist movement in America. Three weeks ago, the Department of Homeland Security of the state of New Jersey issued an official warning. Do you know what that warning was? The warning was that the greatest danger to civilian peace in the state of New Jersey are white supremacist organizations in this state. They didn't say the Taliban. They didn't say terrorists. They didn't say any of these other organizations. They said white supremacist organizations. And what we need to do, we need to go down to the White House and make a citizen's arrest of the number one white supremacist in the United States of America. So I say that to say, listen, one more thing. One more little point. Just a little point of information. The FBI, the Federal Bureau of Investigation, issued a report last year. Do you know what the report said? The report of the FBI said that white supremacist organizations have infiltrated every level of law enforcement in the United States. Do you know that the father of the duo, the father and son that killed Ahmaud Aubrey, he's a member of a white supremacist gang. Do you know that Chauvin, the officer that killed George Floyd, he was brought up 
filing charges in his own department for wearing a white supremacist badge on his on his jacket. So we are fighting these are the enemies that we're fighting. People that we have been fighting for a long time. But they think they're going to win. But I'm here to tell them today, I am going to fight for every inch of ground. I'm ready to give my life. If I have to give my life in this struggle, I'm ready. Who's next? Dr. Calfani is next. Dr. Calfani. My people. Power to the people. Oh, y'all ain't ready. Power to the people. because Fannie Lou Hamer wasn't tired. We're not tired because Critica Scott King wasn't tired. We're not tired because Malcolm X wasn't tired. We're not tired because all the people who made it possible for us to be here today were not tired. We're not tired because Amir Baraka was not tired. We're not tired because we are not going to allow the current situation to remain consistent in this world so that we can't change what's happening. You see, we got examples of all of those ancestors. I poured libations out here today because our ancestors have paved the way. We are here we are today because of the bloodshed of our ancestors. We're here because of the bloodshed of our ancestors. And because of their sacrifices, we have to continue to struggle. Now this man hasn't said something here today that's powerful because we, we need to support him and this is not a political rally, but this man is running for political office for senator in this country. And we need to support Larry Ham in that capacity. The young sister, okay, the young, no, no, I'm not. This sister who is saying that we got to change legislation, we got to work to make that a possibility. We got to bring that into reality. We got to support people like Mayor Raz Baraka. We got to support people like Mayor Raz Baraka. Let's give it up for Mayor Raz Baraka.
Because it's okay if a black boy dies. It don't matter who you are, because you'll be ready to fly. And you'll bump your music too loud, they'll catch you rocking in the backseat and grab your Jordan side. I was eight when I felt my bubble break. Because Trayvon was my older brother. Talk about it. My father. Talk about it. My classmate. Talk about he was me. Talk about it. We were all black hoodies and black Talk bodies. Cheating ducks. Whoever wants to take that their shoddy because we are perfect for practice and moving targets. Oh. Purpose. 
way to work to go to school. It could have been any of us. These cops not here to protect us as they should. They don't care about us, but we need to care about ourselves and we need to get justice for everybody. For New Jersey, for New York, for him, for her. It don't stop here, y'all, so don't let them sweep this under the rug. We here, we want justice, and if we don't get it, ain't no if we don't get it, because we're going to get it. It's going to take a long, long time, but I'm here to fight, and if you're here to fight, then let's get this party started. Power to the people! Power to the people! Power to the people! I gotta say it's an absolute honor as a Latino to be standing here next to my brother, next to my friend, next to my comrade Larry Ham. We're here because what we saw happen to the brother in Minneapolis is not an isolated incident, is it? Every time they do this to one of us, they say it was a bad apple. The one bad cop never happened before and never gonna happen again. But we know better, don't we? We know how this machine treats us. We know that they don't see us as human beings. That's why we have to do this. That's why we have to be here. Because they don't see us as people. That's why we have to say, Black Lives Matter! Black Lives Matter! So it's a privilege, because I look out in the crowd and I see beautiful colors. I see black, brown, yellow, white, red. I see all the tribes of humanity standing here with us today to say to a machine that doesn't love us and doesn't care about us, we love ourselves. We love each other. We don't need y'all, cause we got us. And that's all we ever needed. So it's a pleasure to be here with the brother. Thank you all for your peace and your solidarity. Thank you for being here showing what's right. Black Lives Matter. Yeah, 
anymore. But that was in 2019 and 2020, we just reinstated the voting rights to our all people who are incarcerated. And they didn't just hand that to us, y'all. They didn't just hand that to us. We fought for it. We fought for it. So for all of us, keep fighting for my allies, my allies, my boricuas, all my habladoras de español. Te veo. Te veo. Necesitamos todo. Cada día, no siempre hoy, pero cada día. Okay? We need to be fighting for all of us. Not just today, not just tomorrow. We fighting for everybody who don't even have a seat at the table. All right, y'all, solidarity, love you all. Shout out to Pop, shout out to Pop. They ain't just been here, they ain't doing this. They true to this, thank you, Mr. Ham. Power to the people. What's your name? Kiana goes here. Where are you from? I'm from I'm from East Orange, but I represent Love Over Low Foundation. She's from East Orange. Give her a big hand. Hi, I'm Kiana Surratt, and I'm only 17 years old. But all my life, I've always been hearing that I'm loud and I'm mad all the time. And you know what? It's because I'm black. They always blame it on that, and that aggression is because we never get the justice we deserve. So until we get the justice we deserve, I'ma keep being loud and I'ma keep being aggressive. And there isn't gonna be any peace. There isn't gonna be any peace. So I'm gonna keep screaming to the mountaintop because I'm upset that my father, who is grown, has to be asked by me, a little girl, if he made it to work okay every single day. I don't like having to tell my mother to watch her tone when talking to a police officer because she might die. I don't want my cousin to die because he took a jog up the street. This is unacceptable. Why are you not mad just like me? I'm only 17 years old, and I'm seeing too many deaths by my brothers and sisters. We don't deserve this. Until we get our justice, you're going to keep screaming, no justice? No I need to hear y'all, no justice? No One more time, no justice? No We're not dying no more. We not and dying I'm done. No, you don't have to climb up here. You, you don't, I don't want you to hurt yourself. We got an elder that wants to say something, and she can't climb up here. So y'all listen. Shh, in the back. In the back. Let, let this elder speak. Hello. Hello, young people. Hello, old people. Hello, everybody. I came here to let you know that I love you. And God loves you. I came to let you know that everything that you guys are saying is true. No justice, no peace. Black lives matter. And all the things, all the different things that's been happening is true. But there's one thing that you guys are forgetting that I have to take you way back to the ancestors. I have to remind you that I have to remind you that no matter what happened with our ancestors or what happened, no matter what happened, there's one thing they never forgot. That we are all family with brothers and sisters, uncles, aunts, and cousins. We're not black America, African America. We are black We are black people.
from IYO, which is here in Newark, International Youth Organization. Come on. I know your executive director, Ms. Wallace. Ms. Wallace knows you speak very well of you. Hi, um, I am representing the International... You can't hear me? You can't hear me right now? All right, so I'm going to just talk like this. I represent the International Youth Organization right there in Newark on South 12th Street. I'm going to keep this very politically correct because the way I am outside of that organization, I can't talk like that because I'm representing them. So I'm going to say this. I appreciate Morris Ham. I appreciate Mayor Raz Baraka. I appreciate everybody out here. But I just wanted to give us some key points to stay on topic because at the end of the day, while we're fighting police brutality, we also got to keep ourselves mentally stable and sane. And we can't do anything if we're losing our minds, right? So one thing we need to do, our elder just spoke. I know that there's a huge disconnect between our elders and our youth. Yeah. Mainly because the youth don't want to listen to nobody that's all old. Excuse me, I don't mean it like that, but I'm just saying this is from them. And the elders think that every single youth is just dumb, dumb, and blind. So we need, as the millennials, we need to be that generation to bridge that gap between the youth and the elders. Because they listen to us. They will hear us. And we can take the wisdom from our elders and translate it and say, listen. This is not the way that you need to be doing things. We need to try something else. I'm not taking away from police brutality. I'm not. But until the system is done, we need to work on certain things. Another thing we need to work on, staying on code. I'm talking to black American descendants of slaves. And anybody that want to join us, cool. We with it. I'm not talking about, excuse my language, anybody else that is not a descendant of an American slave. I'm talking to you. Stay on call with other black people. You see something, you say something. I'm not talking about no snitching. I'm not talking about none of that. I'm talking about stop disrespecting each other in front of other people. You don't, if you got a problem with somebody, you address it in private. You don't talk about black people in front of other races of people. You don't do that. We're not doing that anymore. Next thing we're going to do, we're going to circulate our money in our own community. We're going to stop. We're going to stop. We're going to stop spending money places that we can't get hired at. We're going to stop spending money in places where they got to put up a bulletproof glass in front of you to shop. They don't do that other places. They only do it in black neighborhoods. So we're not going there anymore. The last thing we're going to do is police our own communities. And in order to do that, Newark, 30 years student down the street from here. I woke up this morning 
and I did not think I'd be up here right now, but I got something to get off my chest. And that's to let you know that all the racists out here are real mad right now. You know why? Because they don't think a black man like me can get up here and express myself the way I can right now. They bet on all of us. They kill us on live TV and want us to go burn down our own neighborhoods. That's the real plan. They could have arrested him the day of, but they waited for us to get mad and go burn down our own Target, our corner stores, and to get mad and destroy us, our own people. And then they arrested him. Well, look at what we did here today. Look at everybody here. Look at how we got up here and we spoke eloquently and we made poems and we touched the heart of the people and we have a message to send to the world right now that you can kill us in the shadows and you can kill us on live TV, but we will come for you by any means necessary. Thank you. All right. She can't climb up here. Listen, listen, listen. There was a brother that was killed in Newark on Springfield Avenue on 14th Street. His name was Rashid Fuquan Moore. We fought at least three years on this case, marching for justice. His car was stuck in a snowbank. Police got out of their car, came back, shot him and his friend. His friend Richard Guy survived, but he didn't survive. But his mother is here, and she want to say a few words. Elizabeth Moore, give her a hand. Right, after, after this. Yeah. Hello, everyone. I just want to say, this is so, so sad. Every time I think I'm, every time I think I'm, com oh, I'm coming down, someone else gets killed. March 24th, they tried to get my grandson. They tried to kill him the same way. They killed my son. But they didn't shoot him. They beat him. Mistaken identity because someone got killed and they had the same kind of car. I mean, I can't take it no more. It's just it's crazy. And then the police, they want to laugh in your face, want you to think that they're doing good, but they're a bunch of snakes. Bunch of snakes. And I, I can't stand them. I, I just can't stand them. Right, right. But they don't intimidate me because I'll stand up to them just like I stand up to anybody else. Take that gun off and I will fight you just like I'll fight anybody else. That's all I have. Thank you, Miss Mayor. Come on, bro. Two minutes. One minute. Listen. My name is Devion Johnson. If you're not in the crowd and you're not angry right now, I don't know what you're doing here. Let me explain something to you. This is a system. Downtown isn't what it used to look like when I was growing up in North. They coming back. Listen, they depressed the assets to take the property back. And they're going to move people like us out. That's why we need to be in these positions. They say fight the system. I don't say that. Join the system. Change the system. Make the system work for you. If we keep, if we keep staying out here, if all we do is protest, if all we do is protest and we make no change, if none of us go home and read a book about something, if no, if none of us goes home and learns something new within this quarantine, I don't know what you're doing right now. But listen, this is all I know, and I'm gonna end on this note. Listen. Take a look on the inside of Black Depression. Liquor stores on every corner in the hood, it's a blessing. That the devil be stole, we don't pay for redemption. Kicking coke in the store for paper seem more effective. In the hood, it's a war for my enemy's land. Who's the reason for me shooting and my gun don't jam? Take a look on the inside of generational wealth. Think I can't even finish the sentence. Y'all feel me? the way we live, and the way we treat each other. Love wins over hate. Do the right thing. I'm going to speak to, listen, I know we angry. This is going to speak to, I have a poem, but this is going to speak to the fact that, listen, we will not riot. Listen. Just like my brother said, we got to
to take responsibility for our image. Come on. I'm gonna do this poll because I need for everybody out here young that's angry, you're angry, you're frustrated, and it's gonna make something come out of you that they put in us called a nigga and a bitch. That ain't true. That ain't true. We, we were not slaves, we were enslaved. That ain't true. So I need for you to listen to this poll. Hey, yo, you give me the mic, you let me rowdy up the crowd. Make they skins blush with green lights, eyes the eyes of the owl. No, 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 but not yet, no, not yet, no, what do you mean? We survived the lives of years of captivity and we still don't have a team? The many prophets, the rolling of tears, mentally, physically dripping of sweat. We revise techniques and strategies through obstacles and passing breeze, yet we let nothing resurrect. These are the days of revelations, all that too did you forget. For I keep 360 my head to watch my back and watch the back of my enemy. Send poisonous venom through my bloodstream, sucking the bullshit out divinity. Extend rays to take the warning, existing three feet beyond me with y'all stick figure lords. Hand puppets dancing across the boards. Guarding your grill with paper machete swords. Can't even comprehend it, the only reason you participate in this culturally biased treason is simply the fact that niggas and bitches will never be ready. Niggas and bitches will never be ready. Niggas and bitches will never ever be ready for war until we realize how to be niggas and bitches no more. Come on. Understand this? My thoughts travel through parallel prisons from throughout the equinox. Transcending through my non ether to unlock the weakest lock. Floating my physical form against the current reform backwards to rescue wisdom and to stop the ticking clock. Talking to consume the energies from my mommy's tomb. We heard them plotting on our destiny as a cocoon in my mommy's womb. To whom this main concern is those who blood is as thick as cotton. And those who are mentally chained to a game, meant to inherit your, meant to erase your inherit game. So focus on this thing we call maintain, your true identity is forgotten. The demon at hand makes us stand as the underman, overstand. So then derive to coming and calculating this time versus speed. Within this freedom, you'll find this American freedom to equal dependency. Divide and conquer. Take heed and be wasted. They make it righteous ones. Speak with righteous tongues. Holding righteous guns but living off the root of all evil being. Right? We making our queens bitches. Ignoring the tracks that, ignoring the tracks and chasing our kids back to forty and niggas. But y'all don't hear me though because niggas and bitches will never be ready. Listen, I call you nigga to get your attention. They call you nigga to change your image. Nigga means ignorance, or better yet, ignoring the fact that you are what you think. Come on. You are what you think. They coming in our hoods to make us say, oh, my God, my nigga, you see what's in the sky, my nigga? No, my nigga, because they want another nigga to die, my nigga. Don't fall for the distractions. They want another nigga to die, my nigga. Don't fall for the distractions. They want another nigga to die, my nigga. They want another nigga. They want you to riot because they want another nigga to die, my nigga. But all dying stops today. Listen, this is the plan. You got a group of people up here who have organizations. Don't recreate the will. Organize. Listen, put your energy in the right place. We need you. We need you. We need this because we are not niggas and we ain't answering to no nigga or no bitch image no more. Thank you. Come on, Reverend Simmons. And then Reverend Stoddard, and then Deborah from the NAACP, and then Amani Kataba. We need to hear from the Arab community. Come on. Power to the people! Come on, power to the people! Black lives matter! Come on, black lives matter! Black lives matter! Black lives matter! Black lives matter!
This is Reverend Stoddard from the Church of the Oranges. Give him a big hand. The question is asked, where is the preacher? The preacher is right here. And I'm standing here today because Jesus would be here right now. This is where Jesus would be with the people in the crowd fighting for justice and for equality. George was a handsome brother, six feet, six inches tall, with a future. He was a Christian from Houston, Texas originally. From Houston, he moved up to Minnesota with the intent of doing good. And one day, one day changed his entire life. He will forever rest on our lips as our brother, a man who was sacrificed on the knee of a police officer. This morning I stood in my shower and I tried to stop crying. Early in the week I was angry and then this morning I, I couldn't stop crying. But I decided you got to do more than cry. When you finish crying you got to pray. And when you finish praying you got to get up. And when you get up you got to march. And when you march, you got to organize. And when you organize, you got to lead. And when you lead, you got to vote. And when you vote, you got to determine you're going to be an agent of change. You're going to stand in the gap and make a difference. It cannot stay like it is. We're all, we're all called to be agents of change. I'm standing, I'm standing up for George. I'm standing up for my brother. I'm standing up for my sister. I'm standing up for the next black man. This is what I want you to say. I'm going to say united. You're going to say we stand. United? We stand. United? We stand. United? We stand. United? We stand. We stand. Don't ever forget that we need each other. Red and yellow, black and white, we all need each other. This is a great moment. This is a great time. Thank you, Larry, for your leadership. God bless you. Let's keep marching together. God bless you. Community United can never be defeated. The community united can never be defeated. Community United can never be defeated. The community united can never be defeated. All of you, we all have a role to play. When you go back to your respective places, think about what role you're willing to play. Are you going to call the Justice Department? Are you going to write a letter? Are you going to organize in your home? Are you going to be the change you want to see? All right, give a big hand. I want to hear from my Arab brothers and sisters. Come on up here, Amani, Amani Kataba. Give her a hand, our Arab brother and sister. Our Arab sister. George Floyd! George Floyd! George Floyd! George Floyd! Brianna! Muslim, Muslim.
How's it going? This is supposed to be the land of the free and the home of the brave, right? So why is it that when we all gather together, we are gang members, we are thugs, we are looters to the President Trump, we are all nothing but useless individuals. This is what bravery looks like. It's when we gather together, is it not? Exactly. So we gather together, this is bravery. I go by the name of King Jersey, I'm 22. Not because I think I'm the king of Jersey, but because I believe that every one of us are kings and queens from where we come from. Okay? And they've been spilling our royal blood for too long. And I don't know about y'all, but this melanin that runs through my skin is too precious to be on somebody's pavement. Do you understand this? Listen, they want peace. They want respect. They want us to treat their property with peace and respect. But where the fuck is the peace and respect for minorities? Excuse me, I'm talking. Where is the peace and respect for minorities? Exactly. We, we do not get no peace and no respect for, at all for being black. We get treated like shit and we get shot. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Okay, excuse me, excuse me for my language. I'm going to have a couple foul words up here. Because some pig decides to be trigger happy, we get our, spill, our, our blood spilled multiple times. That's not right. So if they want peace and they want respect, they're going to have to give us the same peace and respect that they have by not having a target on their back. If this is bravery, us individually having targets on our back, we group together, now this is a hot spot. They can come together to this hot spot and end us, right? So that's brave for us to be here with all these targets on our back. So you continue to fight and you continue to do what you have to do to make sure your voice is heard, to make sure we are heard, to make sure we are no longer treated like shit. Excuse me, but that's the truth. So, so, do not be peaceful. Do not be respectful until we get the same peace and respect that they're getting. That's all I have to say. Have a go. Can y'all hear me? Y'all too quiet. We move the universe with our energy and I don't think no one has mentioned that yet. No one has mentioned how the roar in your voice swifts and shifts the universe. So I'm going to put this mic down because my, my roar is loud. Okay? So we're going to do like them African lions. We're going to put this mask down because we actually suffocated ourselves. And we're going to let our roars out. Because we can march and we can dance and we can sing and we can do all that stuff. But if we ain't shifting our energy and the words that we are speaking, nothing is going to move. Half of this world is saying we done dying. Half of this world is saying niggas ain't crap. Half of this world is saying I love black men. Half of this world is saying my dad, my baby father ain't shit. Half of this world, I'm sorry. Half, but that's what they're saying. Half of this world is saying, uh, black united we stand, united divided we fall. Half of this world is saying I can't stand black people. And we're black. So we can't worry about who's shifting or who's doing what. We got to shift our own energy. We are in charge of our own energy. We talk about ancestors and everybody got Sharakas and everybody got stones and everybody got Seymour's and everybody got Sage. But what do you got coming out your mouth? I still got, I still got family in prison doing 22 year sentences. I look like a child. I'm not a child. I've been 40 in nine years. I mean nine months, my bad. I got adult children that's out there marching with me. This ain't no game. And if y'all really, really tired, you'll change the words that you are speaking out of your mouth. That's what's killing us. Our words are killing us. So on the count of three, before I get off the stage, we're going to put our masks down because I still see masks up. Y'all not hearing me? Energy is important. We're going to pull our masks down or we're going to let our roars out. You can take this mic, baby. I don't need it no more. One, two, three. Watch the shit. Woo! Hello, my 
name is Bryce Stewart. And to see on my name is Bryce Stewart and I am in Spark Academy in fourth grade. And to see all the bad things that's happening to the people in my color of the skin is just the wrong thing to do. To see a girl shot in the head, seven years old, on the couch just watching her favorite television show, Ayanna Jones. And just watching that happen and imagining that being me is the wrong thing to do. We are not animals. We are people in a different color of black people's skin. We are black people and we are never going to change the color of our skin. We are going to stand up for what is right for us. And we are never going to give up until we get what we, we know is right for us. Thank you and have a nice day. Black Lives Matter, first and foremost. I came up here to say one thing. It's not just about George Floyd. It's about Sandra Bland. It's about Breonna Taylor. It's not just the black men being killed out here. Black women are the most disadvantaged people in this country, point blank period. It's no longer about reforming the police at all. The police derive from slave patrols. What do you think they were made to do? They were made to kill us. It's not about reforming them. The cops out here, black, Hispanic, white, they are here to kill you. Point blank, period. They are not here to help you. If they help your kid cross the street, it's not about that. They're made to keep you in order, in line, to keep you quiet. And we're not going to be quiet anymore. I'm done. I am pissed off. Because black children are being killed. Black women are being killed and no one is talking about it. We need to stop just coming out here to parade around and protest and scream Black Lives Matter when they kill another one of us. We need to start reading. We need to start understanding that this is deeper and this has been happening for way too long. Having black people in positions of power is fun and it's nice and it's nice to see Barack Obama up there. I'm sorry, but Tamir Rice was killed when Barack Obama was president and nothing happened. It's not about black people in positions of power anymore. It's about tearing down those power structures. It's no longer about reforming the system. It's about killing the system. It's about killing the system. We don't, we have surpassed the need for police, for government, for capitalism. Get rid of it all because it is all an inherently racist system. You cannot change something that was born to kill you. Oh, and I just want to say that there are social implications of black women not being talked about in this movement. Right now, it took me two hours to get up here to say this. Men physically pushing me down, and I won't be silenced. Well, that was amazing. I want to follow up and just remind you guys that this is not just about police brutality. This is about the fact that our ancestors were dragged here 400 years ago and they were raped, they pillaged, they burned us, and that affects us to this day, that affects our schools. That's them putting our children in special ed. That's them still refusing to teach us how to read. That's them still putting us in detention. The school to prison pipeline. We need better funding in our schools. We need better jobs. We need our own businesses. We need to own the grocery stores. We still need our 40 acres. They stole land from us. Who built this? Who built this courthouse? that is sending our brothers, our sons, our cousins to jail for 25 years. The same prisons, the same police. It is not just about police brutality. It is about modern slavery. It is about the fact that they are still imprisoning us. They are still finding ways to oppress us. They think that our, our hours, our 40 hours a week are worth $7. They are not. We built this land. We deserve everything here. We, we, this is about the fact, it's about the fact that we don't own this property. It's about the fact that they're protecting property and not people. 
drug abuse in our communities. It is about escapism. It is about us not being here for each other. It is about abuse, domestic violence. We deserve rehabilitation. They gave Dylan Roof, someone who walked in a black church and killed everyone, community service, but they gave our cousins and our brothers 20 years. No, we will not accept that if we have to vote, if we have to build our own schools, if we have to burn this whole thing to the ground, I don't care. We build this and stop letting them control us with this idea of money because we have our hands. We are resourceful, all of us. We do, we're the teachers, we're the nurses, we're the construction workers, we're, we're the nannies. black 
second brown, immigrants, Arabic, Muslim, you name it, I had them all. I stood up for them. And I'm here today standing in solidarity with my brothers and sisters. And I'm letting y'all know, change is now. Enough is enough. We tired. We tired of being tired. When I say George, y'all say Floyd. George! Floyd! George! Floyd! George! Floyd! No justice! No peace! No justice! No peace! No justice! No peace! Black lives matter! 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 Solidarity, y'all. Can somebody take a picture with me standing with this brother? Because this is a real freedom fighter here. See, how many, how many people would risk their livelihood to help their people? You know how they work the people at Amazon? They work them like slaves. They got to fill so many baskets per minute. They don't get no breaks. They get only seconds to go pee. Sometimes they have to pee on themselves because they can't leave the floor to go to the bathroom. You know why Jeff Bezos is the richest man in the world? Because he steals the wealth produced by the laborers in his factory. That's why he's the richest man in the world. You got to understand something. Wealth and poverty are dialectically linked. You can't have wealth without poverty. And I'm gonna tell you something. As one philosopher once said, men who have great wealth have usually committed great thefts. So Bezos is no hero. I know y'all want some of y'all walking out here, you want to be billionaires. The only way you can be a billionaire is to steal the labor, the wealth that's produced by the people that work for you. So I want y'all to get his brother a hand. This is a real freedom fighter. See, everybody talk that talk. But let's see how much talk you talk when it's either your job or the struggle. He took the struggle. He took the struggle. Thank you, brother. Thank you for your sacrifice, man. All right. How you all doing? I'm Mark Lee Simmons, Newark, New Jersey. And I wanted to say, you know, I'm not going to lie to you, I had to check myself this past couple of days. Because I realized I used to walk in fear. Because none of us as black people should have the mental stress and burden every day that we don't know if we get to grow up and die old or by natural causes, but by the hands of a racist person or a racist cop and so on, so power. That's a damn shame. And we shouldn't do it anymore. And I had to sit here and check myself and realize why is this happening? And I thought about it. We have decades of history and proof on how they see us and how we keep being treated. And with that being said, I'm going to say this and I'm going to get off. I'm going to keep it simple and sweet. We should no longer ask for change. We should take it. I'm done asking. I ain't asking for sympathy. I ain't asking for forgiveness. The only thing I ask is when we retaliate, they better not ask why. And to these racist police, I want to say this. They should no longer beat the charge for the death of ours. And that's it. I'm Marquis Simmons, my whole family, North New Jersey. I love y'all. I hear standing with y'all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, brother. Come on. One minute. All right. All right. I'm here from Asbury Park, New Jersey. I'm representing uh, Rutgers Camden. And I just really want to touch base on the push out of black women into the streets, right? The school to prison pipeline and the lack of education reform that we have around mental health. Our mind on the first place that we have to enact change in this world. Your mind, your mental health is very real, right? So we have Phil Murphy going live talking about mental health, but that's all of two, three seconds. Is he here with us now? Mental Health Awareness Month is almost over. There's no education reform. 
I'm here to say kids are struggling. They're being hyper-medicalized, pushed down into the streets. On top of that, the school to prison pipeline, how do you want to hold somebody accountable for the actions that they're committing and the things that they lack knowledge of when we have in local parentis? What does that mean? In Latin, it translates to what? In place of the parent. So you now, you know what I'm saying? You assume that responsibility to talk their peace into them, to let them know that, you know what? Mental health is real. Let me, let me know something. Mental health is real? Can I get an amen? Can I get a something? All right? I'm, I'm tired of it. They try to silence me for too long. I'm here on, a, on behalf of the Asbury Park debate team, okay? Can I get a hell yeah? All right? Yeah. Hell yeah. Hell okay? Because yeah. we are black. We need to be included in these white spaces. How the hell are you making a decision about my life without me being there? Come on, no, please. Since when? You live this life. You walk this path. You will never know my struggle. Include us in these spaces. These young black men getting victimized, criminalized by these people day and day again. How is it possible when you have the responsibility to teach them? Okay, you are the sole entity, meaning legally binded. You have to teach them that. So now assume the responsibility of them being in jail. You're using them and you're basing them now down to a commodity. What? How does that make sense? We're more than a dollar sign. We are the wealth. Take back that black dollar, okay? Take back that black dollar. Take back that black dollar. I'm not, okay, come on. We got to cut it. All right? I say, I say. All right, I'm stepping off. Right. Before you leave today, see them banners? Hold that banner up. Hold it up. The banner, the banners like these, please turn the banners in. Don't take them home with you. Banners cost a lot of money. They really do. And we need them for future demonstrations. One minute. Oh, and also make sure you sign the attendance sheet. I don't know where the, where the attendance sheet at. Where is it? Well, if it's over here, how can the people over there sign it? Come on, brother. One minute. What's going on? What's going on, everybody? Um, some people know me. I'm from East Stars, New Jersey. Um, but we moved to North Brown like I was 19. My name is Patrick Marquise Jones. Patrick is a scholar. Marquise Jones is an artist. But I'm coming to y'all as a scholar um, about consciousness. We see it every day on TV how many black people get killed. And then at the end of the day, we go, we could do something to our black neighbor and be like, oh, well, F them. They be all right. We got to be conscious of the things we say the things we do, how we talk to each other, every day when it comes to our, your black neighbor. As a black man, I want to empower you. And I hope as a black woman or a black man, you want to empower me too. And all I'm saying is that we got to remember that we got kids. We got kids. We have children. We have teenagers that look up to us. There's a lot of teenagers. I live in Georgia. My, we moved to Georgia King Village. I got a lot of teenagers there because my grandmother's still in it. That look up to me, want me to come to their school, talk to them. If you know me, I don't really talk like that. But obviously I'm fed up, so now I'm speaking. But at the end of the day, we got to have respect for each other. Just because you gang gang, that don't mean you can't be respectful. You understand what I'm saying? We all, we all deserve respect. My grandmother's sick. You understand? I'm irritated majority of the time. My mother's dead by the time I was 10. So I, I care a lot about my grandmother. You understand? So I'm always thinking about my grandmother and family members who ain't doing so well. So I'm sure because I'm going through this, you're going through the same thing. For me to come out my house, I don't even live in North or East Stars no more, but for me to come out my house and come do this walk with y'all, I really hope this make a change in every day. I got, I got people that I know as police officers. You know, I can't sit here and say, oh, police officers are good because I really don't like some of them. But at the end of the day, we all black. We all try to live to see tomorrow. Have respect for each other. Be conscious of the things you say, do, everything. Um, and that's it. Thank you. Who's next? I want to say, still we rise. Still we rise. Still we rise. Still we rise. But his knee on our neck, still we rise. They have tried to keep us down for so many years with legal legislations and laws, but still we rise. I come here telling my brothers and sisters today, the only way it's going to change is we get into them libraries and start getting smart. If we start going to these meetings that they have and taking advantage of the grants that they're giving out, that's how we're going to rise. For I know the Bible.
name is Chanel McCloud. I represent Project Ready in North, but first and foremost, I am a mother and I am a wife of a black man. I am a mother of a black son. I am a mother of a black daughter. And when I watched the video, I cried and I wept. And when I got up the next day, I cried and I wept. But let me tell you why I woke up this morning and I woke up on fire. I woke up on fire because I realized that today, our family here in the state of New Jersey would congregate. We would congregate, we would organize, and we would take what is rightfully ours. And let me tell you what's rightfully ours. Our vote. And let me tell you what, if you remember nothing else when you leave here, remember in the 2016 presidential election, only 46% of Newark residents showed up and showed out to vote. Only 46%, not 100%, not 80%, less than half of us came out to exercise our vote for who was going to be our next president, the lowest in Essex County. We just left an election, the North School Board election, where only 7% of us showed up and showed out to elect people who will represent our educational system. If we do nothing else, we leave here and we call a friend to call a friend to call a friend to let them know that we own our voice, our vote, we own our voice, and we will not let this next presidential election or any election have your voice go unheard. This is not politics. People say I don't want to play politics. This is life. <laughs> That's my wife. <laughs> Hey, listen, my name is Walter Jason McLeod, born and raised in North New Jersey, Tillinghash Street. Tillinghash Street, South Ward. One thing that I want to say, I don't need to be louder than her. I don't need to have to do better than her, because she is my queen. I, I push her forward. But as king's men, we have to make sure that we do that for our ladies. I don't care if they're your wife, I don't care if they're your friend, your sister, your mother. You have to accelerate them. Allow them to be their best selves because they make us our best selves. We need the black women to do the things that they do for us to understand the pain that we really have. If you, if you are in pain, men, raise your hand. If you are in pain, raise your hand. I am not talking about because of what happened to the people. I'm talking about what happens to you every day. Man. What you don't get to do. Man. What you don't get to say. Man. What you don't get to be. Man. Listen. Uplift your people. I like to speak in action. I don't just like to talk. Ten people today get their Twitter get their Instagram, get their Facebook, get their phone number, get their email. Follow them. Encourage them. Don't be a ghost follower. Don't just show up and stand next to them. Stand with them. Hold their hands. We all need to stick together and we need to walk together. We need to do business together. We need to learn together. We need to raise our children together. Your child is my child. I will not let your child be bad. I will not let my own be bad. I will treat them as I would treat my own. We should do that for each other. I want to tell you, you are a beautiful people. We are a beautiful people. You are all intelligent enough to do what you need to do to be greater. It starts inside of us, and it permeates to the next one. I love y'all. Hey y'all, I'm going to say some stuff that some of y'all probably not going to like. Um, it's time for us to start imagining radically new futures. We've been protesting, we've been speaking up, we've been doing everything we can. We even built a whole new city and what did they do? They bombed it. Know your history, okay? 
So it's important for us to start imagining radically new futures. If you can imagine it, then it can be. So imagine what you want, visualize it in your head, write it down and do not lose sight of it. Speak to your friends about it, speak to your family about it, and have them visualize as well because if we all visualize the same amazing future for ourselves, the future where black trans lives matter, where black queer lives matter, where black women's lives matter, where there are no prisons, where capitalism is not a thing, then it can happen. Remember that you are all very powerful because of your imaginations. That's how our ancestors got us to this point, and that's how we're going to move our children forward. Thank you. Black power! Black power! Power to my people! Power to my people! I just wanted to say something really quick. I was on the side crying from hearing everybody else that was talking. I had to write down what I wanted to say. Alright, so I want to thank each and every one of you for coming out. I want to thank every race for showing up and coming through. But at the same time, I also want to say that all of you people of color that say you go through the same struggles as us, you don't. You don't go through everything that we go through. You guys could not begin to comprehend what it feels like to wake up every day and know that the color of your skin determines how valuable you are to society. Black people, we have to stick together, always. We have to look out for each other, always. The same way every other race looks out for each other, they want us to protect, they want us to protest for gay rights, they want us to protest for the Chinese because Trump called it the Chinese virus. Where are those people that they want us to protest for? Are they out here? The people that want us to protest for them, are they out here protesting for us? No! I'm sorry, but we have our own that we can, that you have your own that you can defend, and we have our own that we have to defend. Us as blacks have our own problems we're trying to resolve. So us as blacks, we have to come together, we have to stop spending money and supporting places that look at us as just dollar signs. That's all I'm gonna say. I just wanna say I love each and every one of you. Thank you guys for coming out. All my black people, I love you so much. Thank you. Love yourselves and teach your black kids to love themselves. Thank you. Hello, hello, Black Power, Power to the People. We are the people. I represent Roxanne Habits, and that stands for Roxy's and Xanax. That's killing our community. But here today, I'm a South Ward. I went to Essex County College. I work at Rutgers University, University Hospital. We are here. We are united. Keep the peace going on all over the world. Malcolm X dream today is alive, and I'm happy to be a part of this movement. For any questions, go log on to RX Habits. I will keep you informed. I got the top resources in the city because I'm on the Rutgers. I'm on the university. Any resource we need to collaborate, to be one and united, we're going to fight this fight together. Black power. Black power.
for coming out today. I especially want to thank those of you who stayed till the end. Give yourselves a hand that you actually stayed till the end. I want to thank all the organizations without any type of personal contact reached out to your members and you asked your members to come here today. Give the organizations that brought people out here today, give them a big hand. I am so proud of you today. Do you know that this protest today will go down as one of the greatest protests in the city of Lord in history? When we got up here, the people were still at Broad Market on both sides of the street. It was magnificent. But brothers and sisters, it's not about a moment, it's about a movement. This, this was a great moment today, and I'm glad I lived long enough to see it. But brothers and sisters, trust me when I tell you, a great struggle is coming in America. A great struggle. One more difficult than those that existed during the 60s. But we got to organize. Listen, everybody in here must be a part of an organization. That's what the future requires. This is not to say you don't have an individual life and you can't do things on your own. But ultimately to have the kind of power that we had today, we had power today. We shut it down today. Shut it down. But do you know, listen, do you know that we're going to have to do this again and again and again? That's why it's called a struggle. That's why it's not called a magic wand. A sister called me last night about 11 o'clock when I was parked in front of the 7-Eleven. I was still trying to do work trying to get everything together for this protest today and I'm sitting in the car, sister called me. She was crying on the phone. And she said she was full of pain about how George Floyd was killed. But you know the thing that struck me was not that she said she was full of pain, but she said she felt so alone. She did not feel the compassion around her that she thought she would feel. I hope she came here today because if she was here today, she would see that she was not alone. Not at all. Not alone. And then when I was standing in Staples this morning, this morning, trying to get those little black and white posters made, a sister called me on the phone and one of the first things she said to me was somebody had told her about this protest, but she don't believe in protests and that protest don't get nothing done. So I took a deep breath. I mean, I could have just unloaded, but I took a deep breath and I engaged her in a conversation calmly. And I said, sister, the whole history of black people in this country shows that if there is no struggle, there is no progress. Every time that we faced a major challenge, we had to come together in protest. A slave rebellion was a protest. You know how many hundreds of years there were slave rebellions? The Civil War was a protest. Harriet Tubman rescuing black people and bringing them north was a protest. There was an abolitionist movement, it was a protest. I went to Princeton University. You know where I come from? I come from Ridgewood Avenue in North. And when my father died at four years old, I moved to 12th Street. And I lived on 527 South 12th Street between 16th and 18th Avenue for 22 years. My mother was the seamstress in the cleaners around the corner on 16th Avenue. My mother could have never 
afforded to send me to Princeton University, no matter how good my grades were or how smart I was. You know how I got into Princeton? Because black people kicked the doors of Princeton University open. They kicked the doors of Rutgers University open. They kicked the doors of Harvard open. They kicked the doors of Yale open. They kicked the doors of all of those colleges across America that were closed to us. Because without the Civil Rights Act, I couldn't have went to Princeton. Without the Voting Rights Act, I couldn't have went to Princeton. Without the Higher Education Act, I couldn't have went to Princeton. And all those acts happened because people were protesting for you. People that didn't even know you, didn't even know that you were going to be born, wanted to make it possible for you to have a better life than they did. So they protested. They lost their jobs teaching because they protested. They were kicked out of college during the Civil Rights Movement because they protested. Some of them were killed on freedom rides, killed on sit-ins, killed on voter registration drives because they wanted us to have a better life. Brothers and sisters, protest is not a magic wand. It's not going to be no instant change. Protest is a weapon that we use in our protracted struggle. And then what do we mean by protracted struggle? We mean a struggle that's going to take a long time. We talked to civilian, talked about civilian review board today. It took 60 years from the time that Amiri Baraka started campaigning for a civilian review board until 2014 to bring it about. Social change is the hardest. And changing the institutions of policing, they are the hardest. So I want you to be involved. I want you to be in the struggle for the long haul. Not just for the day. Not just for the big march. Yes, I want you to celebrate that we had a great march today. You should be happy. I'm going to be happy. I'm going to be so happy tonight that I'm going to sleep really good because we got thousands and thousands of people together and we marched out and we came in and when the account is written when you watch the news tonight and when you read the paper tomorrow you will see that we kept our eyes on the prize and there was nothing that distracted us and took our attention away from our goal, brothers and sisters. We gotta fight. So, I invite those of you who are not members of the People's Organization for Progress to join the People's Organization for Progress. We are a grassroots organization. We work for racial, social, economic justice and peace. We were founded in 1982. We will celebrate our 38th anniversary in August. We've been here for 38 years. We are all volunteer organization. We don't take money from corporations. We don't take money from political parties. We don't take money from the government. Everything we do, we do through our own voluntary self-help efforts. And if you want to be a part of an organization that doesn't just talk about change, but actually fights for change, then I invite you to join the People's Organization for Progress. You can be a member of POP, and you can be a member of whatever organization you're in now. You don't have to quit an organization to join us. We only have one requirement. We don't care what your religion is, what your political party is. We don't care if you're pretty or ugly, if you're fat or skinny. We don't care what your sexual orientation is, the color of your skin is. We have one requirement. And that is this, do you want justice? 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 If you want justice, then you should join the People's Organization for Progress. So brothers and sisters, I thank you for coming. I thank the mayor today who marched the whole route with us. Give him a hand. He's not here, but give him a hand. Listen, 
Let me tell you a story. Let me tell you a story. Let me tell you a story. When Rodney King was beaten in the 1990s, we wanted to march in Newark. And we had a black mayor at that time. We've had, yes we did. We had a black mayor at that time. No, this was after Gibson. We had, I don't want to say the name. We had a black man. We had to go to court to sue the city of Newark to have that march to protest the beating of Rodney King. So when people tell you things don't change, they're not telling the truth. They're speaking from their emotion. But an examination of history will show you, no, we didn't change the whole thing, but we didn't even ask for a permit for this march today. We didn't have no permit, but the mayor came out and marched with us today. He marched the whole way with us today. You gotta study, and you have to not only study ancient history, you have to study contemporary history. You know, because some of you get radicalized and you think nothing happened before you got radicalized. Let me tell you something. I can remember, not too long ago, when in these colleges, and this, when I say not too long, I'm talking about six, seven years ago, people whispered the word socialism. They whispered the word socialism. You wouldn't let the professor know you was a socialist because you know he would hold it against you and give you a bad grade. At Princeton University, I was part of a secret student organization called the Student Association for the Study of Scientific Socialism. Because to even say the word, you risk your academic career. But that has changed. Bernie Sanders, even though he's not in the race anymore, he changed political discourse in America. People are not ashamed or scared to say the word socialist. I was doing an interview on the TV the other day. They said, Mr. Ham, are you a socialist? I said, yes, I am. I'm a democratic socialist. Yes, I am. But I'm not just a socialist. You know, we're multidimensional. I'm a socialist. But I'm also a black liberationist because I want to see the liberation of black people from all forms of racial oppression. But I'm not only a socialist and a black liberationist, I'm also a humanist because I want to see the elimination of suffering for all human beings. Because when you can put suffering on one group of people, it's very easy to shift it and put that suffering on somebody else. Things have changed, but brothers and sisters, we're going to have to have more big marches. And in the future, we're going to have to engage in civil disobedience. And in the future, we're going to have to get, engage in massive economic boycotts. Yeah. And in the future, we're going to have to use our votes. And in the future, we're going to have to use our dollars. I hope that you will financially support organizations like the People's Organization for Progress. Because we can't do the things we do without finance. Even to make a revolution, you need finance. Where's my poster? We need a revolution. Where? Well, bring it over here. We need a revolution. Bring it quick, because people are ready to go. They don't want to hear me talking all night. <laughs> While we struggle against police brutality, that's just one struggle. We, we struggle for affordable housing and gentrification. We struggle against gentrification. We struggle for health care for all. We struggle for quality education for all children. We struggle for workers for a living wage, not just a minimum wage. You can't pay no rent on $7.25 an hour or on $8.35 an hour. Yes, we support doubling the minimum wage to $15, but I'm going to tell you something. $15 ain't nothing to crow about. You know, we need a living wage. And in this struggle, we must also struggle for economic justice. We must struggle for the rights of workers, like that brother that was here, Chris Smith, the right of workers to unionize. One of the reasons we're having such a hard time in America, because we don't have a strong union movement. Less than 10% of workers in America are unionized. So there's a lot of things we gotta struggle for, but in the final analysis, 
we must struggle for the fundamental transformation of the United States. I urge you to read the works of Dr. Martin Luther King, Measure of a Man, Stride Toward Freedom, Strength to Love, Why We Can't Wait, Where Do We Go From Here, Chaos or Community, and Trumpet of Conscience. In the fifth book, Where Do We Go From Here, Community or Chaos, Dr. King said this. He said we need, and this was in 1966, Dr. King said we need a radical redistribution of power and wealth in America. In 1966, Dr. Martin Luther King said we need a fundamental transformation of our socioeconomic system. Dr. King wasn't just fighting for civil rights. He was also fighting for economic rights, but he was also fighting for fundamental transformation. At the end of his life, his last campaign was the Poor People's Campaign. Do you know what Dr. King really wanted to do? Read where do we go from here. He said, I want to bring a million people to Washington, D.C. This is what he said. I want to bring the black from the ghettos, the Latinos from the barrios, the Native Americans from the reservations, and the poor whites from Appalachia. And we're going to take a million people to Washington. And we're going to engage in massive civil disobedience and shut Washington down until Congress passes an economic bill of rights. That is why they killed Martin Luther King. And do you know what? Let me tell you something. I'll be 67 in December. I know what happened during the 60s. And I'm going to tell you something. We are actually struggling ideologically to get back to where we were in 1968. To get back to where we were. Let me tell you something. We had a phrase, a slogan in, 19, in the 1960s called right around the corner. Because we thought literally the revolution was right around the corner. But it didn't happen. The FBI went into work. They had a program, Cointel Pro. They killed off our black, our militant black leaders, put them in jail, destroyed our militant black organizations. And we have been struggling to get back to where we were ever since. So I thank you, brothers and sisters, for coming out today. I don't want to be out here all night. I could talk for a while. But give yourselves a big hand. I want to thank those of you who are marshals today. And listen, 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 listen. I want to thank the brothers and sisters that worked to put this demonstration together who didn't even ask to speak. There are a whole bunch of people that had a right to be right here, but they stood aside so that the masses of the people could speak. Because speaking, although it's something simple, some of these young people that spoke here today, they will remember this moment for the rest of their lives. For the rest of their lives. This was their political baptism. This for many of the youth that were here today, this was their first demonstration, their first act of resistance. This was their political baptism today. And they will never forget it. And it was made possible because people who did work said, no, I'm not going to ask to speak. I'll let them speak. That's really a selfless revolutionary spirit. And I think there was a brother standing right here came all the way up from Penn's Grove. You know what Penn's Grove is? Penn's Grove is the last town on the turnpike. Here's a sister that drove up here Thursday or Wednesday from North Carolina to be here today. This sister Janine. She drove up here. She drove up here. So lastly, when you get home, go on Go, go on Facebook and look up the People's Organization for Progress. Sign up on our Facebook page. If we could just get half the brothers and sisters that came in, I'm not even talking about joining pop. 
If we could get half of the brothers and sisters that was here today to keep working with us, we'd have the most powerful political organization in the whole state of New Jersey. It's about power, brothers and sisters. And nobody is going to give it to us. Power is not given. Power is taken. We didn't wait for somebody to invite us to have this march today. We had a meeting of our organization on Thursday night and we march today in the thousands on Saturday. So stay safe, continue to social distance, and do everything else. I don't want anybody to catch the coronavirus, but there's some things worse than corona, like racism. <laughs> you want to talk about virus? That's a virus. That's a more intractable virus You'll get over Corona. America been suffering from racism for 400 years. 400 years. We want revolution. We need a new generation of revolutionaries to step forward. A new generation of brothers and sisters who will not see organizing and mobilizing and working in the struggle as a part-time thing, but something they want to dedicate their lives to so that we could build the kind of movement that can actually change this country. They're not going to let us change the country. We should vote, but it's going to take more than voting. It's going to take a movement, a revolutionary movement. And to have a revolutionary movement, you must have a revolutionary organization. You must have an organization of professional revolutionaries, of people who see it, not perhaps as their vocation, but as their avocation to work to build the movement and to transform society. Thank you very much. Power to the people! Power to the people! Power to the people! No justice!